Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here, looking in the Shepherd of Hermes. This is the William Wake translation, and I wanted to try to finish out this series on commands. We're already up to command eight, and that is that we must flee from evil and do good works. Okay, so let's jump right into it. I have told thee, said he, that there are two kinds of creatures of the Lord, and there, th and there is a twofold abstinence. From some things, therefore, thou must abstain, and from others not. Okay, now he told us uh, this in the previous um, command, command 7. Now, and in various places, but you can look in command 7 and see what he's talking about, how he told us of these two creatures. But let's go on. Verse 2 says, I answered, declare to me, sir, from what must I abstain, and from what not? Okay, so what must I do and what, what must I do? What must I do? What must I not do? Hearken, said he, keep thyself from evil. Okay, and do it not. Yet abstain not from good, but do it. For if thou shalt abstain from what is good and not do it, thou shalt sin. Abstain therefore from all evil and thou shalt know all righteousness. Okay, now this is pretty much what he's saying here is... Okay, the evil things of life we are to abstain from, and the good things of life we are to do. You say, well, duh, everybody should have known that. Well, let's see what he says. Maybe he's going to expound on, you know, what he means. He has several more verses here. Let's see what else he says. Verse 3 says, I said, what evil things are they from which I must abstain? Harkin said he from adultery. That is an evil thing, right? That's when we, you know, have extracurricular marital, you know, activity or, or such. But the thing about adultery in 2018, we, we, we only think of marriage in terms of certificates. So if we don't have a marriage paper, if we never stood in front of a judge or um, a preacher or whoever and got officially married with a, a government seal on our paper, we're not considered married. So there's a whole bunch of girlfriend and boyfriends out here who don't know that they are actually committing adultery because the biblical definition of marriage doesn't involve paper. It doesn't involve judges and preachers either. It, um... A lot of people are married that don't even know it. Let me just put it like that. One well, another thing we're supposed to abstain from is drunkenness. Okay. Now we we hear about this a lot in you know the um, the uh, New Testament where he talking he talks about people being drunkards. Now this doesn't necessarily say you're not supposed to drink. It's kind of saying that you're not supposed to be drunk all the time, a drunkard or you know all the time. Supposed to abstain from riots. Right? We haven't seen many riots lately, but, you know, we're going to see a few here coming up here as these um, floodwaters increase. A lot of people are going to start rioting, especially when the food shortages, you know, start coming. But, you know, are we to partake in that? I'm out of run down to Walmart and stock up, too. I would like to, but I can't because, you know, I said it abstain from riots from excess of eating. Now, we heard about gluttony. Well, that's another thing we're supposed to abstain from, from daintiness and dishonesty. Now, daintiness is, um, we know what dishonesty is, and a lot of us do, but uh, daintiness, it says delicacy, delicacy, elegance, gracefulness, refinement, uh, prettiness, neatness, depthness, Exquisiteness. I don't even use many of these words, but <clears throat> so we are to abstain from this, you know, so elegant lifestyle. We're supposed to abstain from it. Well, you could kind of think of all of the luxury items associated with it. But, you know, let's go on. And then he said abstain from dishonesty, uh, from pride. Now, um, uh, this this may be one, you know, that we haven't thought about is that, you know, pride is not a good thing. We all think we're supposed to, you know, have some sort of, you know, pride about ourselves, or, you know, um, feel good about ourselves. We kind of think when we're proud, but no, that's something different. And it's, it's not really looked upon as a good thing in the Bible. Pride is not what is it said. Uh, pride falls before man, meaning that, you know, you're going to see that proud man boasting of his stuff. Come back and check him a little while later and see, don't he get knocked off, as they, as, as they say. From fraud, from fraud, we're supposed to abstain from fraud. What is that? What is fraud? We know well. Uh, deception, scam, scheme, con, swindle, racket, deceit, or 
fake. So we don't be fake around people. We abstain from lying. We don't tell mistruths or that kind of stuff. Detain from detraction. Okay, what is detraction? Detraction is slander, uh, abuse, uh, disparagement, or aspersion, disintegration, calumny, um, um, or lessening with the opposite being praise. So the opposite of praise, we're supposed to praise people, not not slander them. Another thing we're supposed to abstain from is hypocrisy. Now, there's a lot of hypocrisy in our churches today as a lot of the people, you know, are preaching to be holy, preaching to be sanctified, preaching to, you know, listen to what the Bible says. But then, you know, they're not. They're not really listening, doing what the Bible says. They're kind of just talking. They don't really know that when they say be holy, they're saying follow the commands of Moses. And so they're hypocrites. Because they're saying be holy and they ain't following the commands of Moses. So they ain't holy, but they preach it holy. That's a hypocrite. From remembrance of injuries. Now, this one is a tough one for me because I've abstained so many injuries. And, you know, it's like, you know, the injuries don't go away. You know, it's one thing if somebody steps on your foot and keeps going, you know, and you look in, you know, at them walk away. You know, that's that's um, it's real easy, you know, to 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 not remember that injury but what if the person is still standing on the injury or what if he fully intends to come back and step on your foot again well that makes it harder to not remember those injuries knowing that that person is going to do it again but we have to we have to abstain from remembrance of injuries because it does a lot of harm to us this is what they say holding grudges or holding resentment we can't do that that's that's a really bad one take it from me and from all evil speaking OK, so now these are the things we are to abstain from. Now, he did, you know, put some stuff in it that we wasn't really expecting, you know, as far as the unrighteous things. Um, so let's let's go on. See what else he says. Verse four. For these are the works of inequity from man. Now, I think it was uh, command six where we learned that we have two spirits that dwell with man, the uh, angel of or the spirit of righteousness and then the spirit of inequity. So. These are the works of the spirit of inequity from which the servant of God must abstain for he that cannot keep himself from these things cannot live unto God. Meaning if you can't stop being um, a slanderer or remembering injuries or if you can't stop telling lies or fraud in people, well, you're not going to live under the God, under God, meaning, well, um, I'm not going to go into what it means to be to live unto God because he's very specific about that and. Um, I can't remember exactly what he says. I should, but I don't. I um, need to go sec that second again. Doesn't sound good, whatever it is. You cannot live unto God. You're going to die unto God. None of us wants to die. Five. But here, said he, what follows of these kinds of things? For indeed, many more there are from which the servant of God must abstain. Okay. But here, said he, what follows of these kind of things? Okay. So he's going to expound on the evil things even further. For indeed, many more there are from which the servants of God must abstain from theft, right? It's cheating, false witness. It sounds a lot like lying, but maybe it's different since he listed it twice from covetousness. Now, covetousness is one thing that we're not really thinking about as a, you know, as a race of people or, or as a all of humanity. Um, but he's talking about looking upon, you know, other people's stuff and wanting that stuff, you know. And, you know, it's really it's, it's, it's really it's really hard because it's so easy to do, especially if somebody pulls in a car in the, in the yard with a new car or you go visit them at their house or you eat dinner with them. And you're like, man, I wish I had, you know, uh, this kind of stuff that these guys have. Well, what that does is it takes you out of your position. It, it, it takes you out of being um, um, uh, complacent with what the Lord has given you. And actually wanting to go forth. And if you try to get those things, well, you're going to have to abandon a lot of um, your spiritual walk to get that new house or to get that new car and such. Uh, from boasting, right? So we are abstaining from boasting. It goes along with being proud, right? Um, boasting about our accomplishments. We have to remember that it is the Lord who has allowed us to accomplish everything that we have, whether it's our education, whether it's our uh, financial wealth or whether whatever it is, 
even our beauty we cannot we cannot boast of how pretty we are because really we had nothing to do with it and all other things of like nature all right verse six do these things seem to thee to be evil or not yeah they seem to be evil you know when you think about them indeed they are very evil to the servants of god now the ones who are not or the servants of belial this is what they do this is this is how they live but to the servants of god it's 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 harmful you know wherefore the servant of god must abstain from all of these works verse 7 keep thyself therefore from them that thou mayest live unto god and be written among those that abstain from them and thus have i shown thee what things thou must avoid now learn from what thou must abstain okay so these are the things that we don't do you don't do all of this things but what do we actually do now in the remember in the first what three verses he had this do good well he said do bad and he expounded upon that well let it, let's see him expound upon what what it means to do good abstain not from any good works but do them okay so he said this is a command so he's commanding us to do good works well nobody's really thought about that we we, we know that we're not supposed to do bad stuff but nobody's thought about a command that we have to do good stuff you mean i have to get up off of my bed and actually go do something for somebody to fulfill the, the commandments of the lord yep that's what it's saying here said he what the virtue of those good works is and what thou must do that thou mayest be saved the f and now be saved is that the opposite of live unto god i'm gonna do a class on that live unto god thing because it's, it's really important and i don't remember exactly what it is but you know I'm sure it's similar to what he's talking about here, being saved. The first of all is faith. Now, here's the stuff we're supposed to do. First of all is faith. Now, this is Hermes Academy. We teach virtues, you know, power, patience, confidence, and faith. Faith is the first one. I, I put them in that order only because I made up a song called, you know, power, patience, confidence, faith as a way of remembering those things. It's supposed to be, you know, really, really, really strong in my life. But, you know, faith comes first. Faith, faith comes first. Then the fear of the Lord. Okay. Fear, now, faith is believing that, you know, believing that the Lord can do all things. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you fear him. So to fear him, meaning you you abstain from a lot of things and you don't do those things because you know that your father is looking at you. Um, but, OK, we're supposed to do charity. Now, charity. Let me look up the synonym for charity. It says aid, help, assistance, contributions, gifts, donations, offerings or handouts. This is stuff we got to do stuff for people. You know, a lot of people, you know, say charity is love. And then, you know, we say, well, I love you. And then that's charity. No, just because you love me don't mean you doing nothing for me. If you truly love me, you or you would be doing stuff it, there would be actual charity behind it i would actually see something you know maybe you bring me a glass of water or something or another there's some action behind this charity it's not just a feeling of love concord what's concord i'm on computer yep yeah agreement harmony accord accordance unity friendship peace co and conflict is the opposite so we ought to be in concord so now are we always going to be in concord with everybody mm, you might not be in concord with the children of belial but we learn in third testament of the bible that when we find ourselves uh, faced with a child who is um, or a person who is not walking according to the laws of Moses, we are not to condemn the person, but, ex but I think it says extend a veil of extend the veil of tolerance. I believe is what it said. And I can go look at it, but I think it said extend that veil of tolerance so that you get along, so that we get in the, getting along. You know, we ain't got to sit here and have a debate over whether you're supposed to be doing that thing. You know, I'll just, you know, just let them do it, you know, and let the Lord handle it. You know, and that way we can not be fighting and arguing all the time, even though they are the children of Belial. Anyway, let's go. Now, so we are to have concord with our brothers. Now, another thing we are supposed to have is equity, which is kind of fairness. Let's look that up. Even handedness, fairness, impar impartiality, justice, justness, parity, or um, say, or fair play, with the opposite being injustice. So this is one of the things you're supposed to do: be fair with 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 you know our our you know 
with everybody we come in contact with. I ain't going to say our friends and our neighbors. No, because anybody could be fair with your friends and neighbors. What about the people? What about your enemies and strangers? You have to be fair with those two. Um, so these are the things we, 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 we run to. Truth. Right. And the truth being, you know, the truth it should have capitalized it there. Truth being the biblical truth, not, you know, um, individual truths, because they do vary from person to person. Another thing is patience. We have to um, be patient because, you know, that's what especially when it deals with the Lord, because, you know, he doesn't give us things when we want him. Well, neither does our brothers. You know, they're 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 and, and they, they don't. Um, do the things, you know, as quickly as we think they should or they don't get it as fast as they should or, you know, and, and our patience gets tested. Well, when our patience gets tested, it's going to start to affect other areas in our life that, you know, like Mike, we might start to get um, a little um, um, sad or can't find the right word. Might be in despair or thinking it never happened, kind of giving up, kind of. You know, all that kind of stuff comes without being patient. Where if you can be patient, you can wait on the Lord. And he's coming. He's going to come through to, for you, you know, in your time of need. And chastity. Let's look up chastity. I think it's the op um, There's no synonym. That, well, it's the opposite of adultery, right? We, we're supposed to be chaste and, you know, keep ourselves from those things. It has something to do with, um, um, why does it, is it not spell right? Why there was no synonym for chastity? Anyway. Let's go on. There is nothing better than these things in the life of men. Who shall keep and do these things in their life? Here next what follows these. So these are the good things. So let's see what happens when you do these. A person who's doing this, you'll see him uh, ministering to the widows. Not despising the fatherless and the poor. Talking about children um, who don't have dads or you know, may be of a single parent home or... You know, their parents may, you know, be going through something or something. And then the poor, talking about maybe homeless or poor children or what. So those that are actively out here looking out for these people are following the angel of righteousness or, or you know, following his commands and doing those good things, which is commanding us to do. To redeem the service of God from necessity. Now, this is big. Why? Because the servants of God have some necessity. It, it, it doesn't really... It seems kind of it seems counterintuitive that the, the servants of God would be a necessity. But you under, got to understand what's going on here. At one point, we were all children of Egypt. We were all Babylonians. We were all partaking in the, the uh, Egyptian way of doing stuff, which includes, you know, ATM cards, going to, you know, Walmart, buying you know, all of the food we can, you know, and, and, and such. Well, when you get on the um, spiritual walk. A lot of this stuff gets purged away, and as you try to make the transition from living off Walmart to living off the land, as you can imagine, it can be difficult, especially when you're first getting started. So if you can, if you see this this going on, and you could come in maybe with some flour, some sugar, or you know something else to help the people in this time of need, you, you're going to get huge credit for that. To be hospitable, for in hospitality there is something. There's sometimes great fruit. Now, hospitality, you know, it, it works a whole lot more than ministry. Now, I've been a minister now for almost 23 years. I've been behind a few pulpits doing classes. I've been a soul winner on the street. I've, you know, uh, done a few YouTube videos. And, you know, I got a Facebook. And other. I did a lot of stuff as far as ministry work. But I'm going to tell you, nothing works like hospitality. When you invite the person in your house and you show them you know what it's supposed to look like opposed to just telling them what it looks like it's big so when you offer them and you give them food or whatever that's what tell not to be contentious let's look what contentious is argumentative combative quarrelsome antagonistic prickly tetchy naysaying or belligerent so when that goes about the other one, um, having concord with one another. So, you know, we're not con contentious when we're not arguing. Now, it doesn't mean that you're agreeing with everything you hear. It just means that you're not arguing the point. You kind of just let the person just go on. Remembering what Dale Carnegie said, you know, um, never tell the person that they're wrong, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It, so you, you don't be contentious, but you be quiet, right? Let the Lord handle it. Uh, 11 to be humble above all men hum humbleness above all men now 
that's a that's a big word there to be humble among all men especially after you learn that the more humble you become the more people take the opportunity to humble you and it's like dang oh wait wait whoa, whoa. i'm human too ain't it y'all got me on the status of a dog now and y'all still telling me you know well, anyway let's go to reverence the aged, to have respect for the aged. Remember the scripture says that you stand before the hoary head and such, so you respect the aged. To labor to be righteous. Okay, so you try to be righteous. It is how you walk. You can't just wake up and say, I am righteous. Therefore, you know, you walk righteous. No, you have to labor to be such. And it involves stuff like the covenant, the laws, the commandments, statutes, judgments, precepts, the Bible. To respect the brotherhood. Now, what is the brotherhood? I think it may be talking about the nation of Israel or the children of Israel getting along with one another as this brotherhood. I think it is. I don't think it's talking about Masons or Illuminati or nothing like that. To bear affronts. Now, what is an affront? Insults, injuries, slurs, slights, outrages, uh, disrespects. With something that offends with the opposite of a with the opposite being to compliment somebody now being walking in righteousness you're going to have to bear affronts why because the other guys actually own the church in this in this time now the, the people the true righteous people aren't the people down at the church the people down at the church is is the other guys, they're the ones, they're the hypocrites. I hate to, you know, put all the churches in one thing. A lot of people get offended. But as a whole, the 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 the, the guys down down there, the Protestant church and the Catholic church, they're not teaching the laws of Moses. They're not teaching what we're supposed to be doing. So when you ever come in contact with these people, guess what they're going to do? They're going to they're going to they're going to call you demons. They're going to call you evil. They're going to call you the righteous one that's following the laws of, of Moses. They're going to say that you are wrong, that you are a fool, that you are all of these bad things. And but you got to take it. You got to take it. And it's hard because you're looking at them and it's like, um, I don't I don't I don't think I'm the fool here. But, you know, if you start to try to explain who's actually the fool there, then you're going you're gonna to start arguing and you're going to be in contentiousness up there. So what does he say? Be quiet. Just, you know, and you have to be long suffering because in this time period that we live in now talking about the church people and I'll pick on them a little bit right here in this time that we're living in here. Yeah, they're ignorant. They're off track, you know. But they're going to find out later on that they that they're off track. And some of them are going to come try to get back on track. So what are you going to do? You know, you, you, if you've cussed them out and, and, you know, did all this bad stuff, you know, it, it, there may be some making up to do. But if you were long suffering and you tolerated their, their insults and all of that other kind of stuff, you, you can just, you know, kind of smile when they come over and try to get some of, you know, the blessings that the Lord is bestowing upon you during the tribulation age. And you, and you have to forget. You know how the devil was bestowing gifts upon them during the Piscean age, and they would not share them with you. In fact, they, you know, anyway, go. As you see, I have some problems with some of this stuff. Even still, I'm working on it. It is a spiritual walk, it is a labor to be righteous. It is not easy. It is not easy. It is not. And I struggle with a lot of this stuff. You know, I look at it like, you know, when I was in high school, I mean, not high school, when I was in college or whatever, you know, I quickly learned that, you know, the smartest people in the, in, in the class, they never make good teachers. You know, the guy that came in like, you know, I didn't even study and I made an A. Well, ask him to explain something to you and he can't. You know, it's the one that, you know, that stayed up all night studying and made the C. He's the one that can teach you. Yeah. And, and, and that's what this spiritual walk is for me. It's like I'm having to learn everything. So, and I think I'm going to delete all of that out. Anyway, let's go. Ca not to cast away those that are fallen from the faith. They, they, they'll be back. Um, if they were ever in the faith, although they may have been beat up and, and such, but when spirit and truth comes and they understand, you know, a lot of the reasons why they fell away from the church was um, satanic in nature. It wasn't, you know, the Lord moving them or them moving them. It was, you know, the hypocrites and, you know, all of them people that were telling them lies and kind of, you know, stirred up their faith a little bit. Well, once the spirit and truth comes back, they will be back, you know, so don't 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 get rid of them. Just, you know, just kind of tolerate them. 
but be but to convert them right and try to bring them spirit and truth and make them to be of good cheer because they said if they've ever walked with the lord if they ever put their hands to the plow and took them away mm, it's pretty rough to admonish sinners let me look what admonish mean what does it mean to admonish a sinner Reprove, caution, reprimand, rebuke, reproach, scold, chide, warn. Okay, well, yeah, you warn the sinners. You let them know that that thing you're doing is an error. You know, you you're not. You, um, uh, um, let's see, like like a lot of my friends and a lot of your friends too carry cell phones. You know, and and you know when they whip them out and start saying taking selfies and such, I let them know you you breaking a second commandment. Do you know that? You know, but I don't get contentious with them after I gave them their warning and I hear their, you know, defensive mechanism going up. Oh, I'm not the other. OK, well, you've been warned. That's it. Not to oppress those that are debtors, meaning the people that that owe us owe us money or, you know, I guess it's debtors debtors to us. Um, so we don't oppress them. You know, because what does it say? The head will become the tail. The tail will become the head. Well, if this person owes me money now in the Piscean age, chances are when it flips, he's going to be on top and I'm going to be, you know, begging him for stuff. So, you know, don't oppress him because you can expect him to oppress you back. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. All other things of a like kind. OK, here's the last verse. Do these things seem to be good or not? Yeah, they seem to be good. And I said... What can be better than these words? Live then, said he, in these commandments, and do not depart from them. For if thou shalt keep all these commandments, thou shalt live unto God. And all they that keep these commandments shall live unto God. All right. Now, look for another class on what it means to live unto God. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there in order to keep it short. We'll be hitting command nine Lex, which is that we must ask God daily and without doubting shalom hermes academy power patience continence and faith we teach virtues